Yo, Vizanth here. So we did get a dev live stream on April 20th, 2023, which is just ended just at first. <laughs> and to talk about more of the end game systems and stuff like that. But the main news is that we get to play more Diablo 4. They're going to have a server slam. If you didn't know on Twitter, they there's like teasing tweets about people getting withdrawals, including myself, I was getting withdrawals. And then Diablo responded uh, about that, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> More or less in those words, but not exactly. We're getting a server slam, if you see on the screen, May 12th to May 14th, 12 p.m. to 12 p.m. Pacific time. Okay, May 12th, 12, 12 p.m. to May 4th, 12, 12 p.m. Pacific time. And all the changes that they did, they got the that they worked on from the data beta feedback is going to be implemented in here. So the dungeon layout, the class changes, the AI um, monster changes, like the killing all enemies. Uh, so that's going to be in there and everything's going to be wiped though. So you're pretty much starting from scratch. So the early access and the open beta stuff, um, is gone. It's not here anymore. And obviously after this, it's going to get wiped. So launch, you start from scratch and the max level is level 20. Okay, so you don't you don't get higher than twenty five in the open access or the open beta. The max level twenty five. This one's twenty, and they actually changed the legendary drop rates to match more of the same drop rate as launch. So you get a more feel. You don't be getting legendaries like back to back because they were inflated in the beta. So if you want to check out that beta um, retrospective, I'll post this link for this article in the description so you can check that out. But it's pretty much it's going to be the same content that we kind of did, the prologue and act one. So that's going to be that. And we get to play all five characters. So we need to worry about that. It's, it's just the one weekend. Okay. So the reward of this is that the old rewards are back. Initial casualty title, early Voyager title, and beta wolf pack. If you already did it in the previous beta, you don't need to do it again. But... There's a new one, if you can see on the screen, the Cry of a Shava Mount Trophy. Um, technically, if you do this, you're doing all of these anyways. But now, if you beat a Shava at level 20, you get this trophy at launch 2. So, do do join in on the server slam. Um, and you can see all the new changes and stuff. It's going to be a fun time. <laughs> I'll be streaming it for sure. So the times that it's going to drop, it's going to start at 9 a.m. on the day after the launch of the server slam and then every three hours after until May 14, 9 a.m. So there's a lot of runs that you can you can do in this. So I'm excited. And obviously you're level 20 instead of 25, so it's going to be a lot harder. And you're getting less legendaries. So make sure you're like level 20 before coming in. <laughs> oh... All right, let's get let's let's get to the actual live stream. We'll start from the beginning with the capstone dungeon and the world tiers. So the capstone dungeon is the milestones for getting to the next world tier, like in Genshin Impact, where you defeat the dungeon and then your next world tier can unlock. And apparently, it seems like it's way harder than the rest of the game at that tier level. So if you're like in veteran mode, level fifty, right, and then everything else is like seems easy. <laughs> And then once you get to the capsule, then it's like, oh my god, it seems hard. From what Riker has been saying. So from the live stream, you can see that the Cathedral of Light is the capstone dungeon for the world tier into nightmare mode, world tier three. And when you get to world tier three, the world gets more dangerous, right? The enemies not just have stat changes, but AI behavior changes. Like be more aggressive, accurate, move faster, cool down to chat between attacks changes, targeting behavior changes, for example, uh, homing projectiles or slightly homing, <laughs> and champions start coming in. So like these elite monsters that you see in the previous game start coming in. So they also mention itemization um, between these tiers. Like during World Tier One and Two, item are based on the monster level that you're killing. Like you're killing a level 35 monster, you get a level 35 item. But when you get starting from world three, the items vary in level. So there's a chance, you start getting a chance to get sacred and unique items in world tier three. And items are not sacred by default, but there's a chance that it could be sacred. And obviously if you're fighting higher level monsters, 
you have a higher chance of getting sacred items. And the sacred item drop have large ranges. So at World Tier 3, like the World Tier 3 recommended like level 50 to 70. You can actually get when you're level 50, you can actually get a an item that had level 70 stats on them, right? The range the range it ranges from level 50 and 70. But the requirement to wear it is match it matches to the item that you obtained it. So if you're level like 53 and then you find an item, a secret item, it's gonna be level 53 requirement to put it on. But it can have level 70 stats. So they they wanted to you to be aware that you can get like OP drops in the beginning of World Tier 3 and it can last you through the whole world tier. And then they talk about briefly over the legendary, so you can see on the screen they have uh, most of the stuff already known, but there's some examples of legendaries. And then they also jump into unique items, and then obviously they show some on there, and they mentioned they're very, very rare, two berries, okay. And these are like the chase item that people are looking for. You might see some of the return of uniques from older games that they are making a return in Diablo Four. Um, so that's pretty much on the items part. So they jump into hell ties. Hell ties are areas that can appear in World Tier Three or higher, where everything like turns red-ish, like a red sky, and events can special events can spawn in, and powerful more more powerful monsters than usual can spawn. Like the butcher can just spawn in randomly, and these monsters in this area can drop cinders, and you can use these cinders to open caches in the area. But if you die in the hell tide, you lose half your cinders. They're just gone. They don't even drop on the floor, so you can't reobtain them. So uh, be careful when you go in there. It's like a high risk reward kind of thing if you want to keep going. But if you, if you lose some, the monsters in there has a decent, pretty good drops for legendary by default. So it's not a complete loss if you die. Uh, also, if you leave the area, if you leave the hell tie area, you lose all your cinders. So you got to make sure to use them while you're in the area. So the hell ties last roughly around an hour and they rotate between different areas throughout sanctuary. And each cache within the hell tide is tied to an item slot. They do spawn in different locations when they first appear and then they're fixed throughout the duration of the hell tide though. So they don't like move or anything. But yeah, since they're tied through item slot, you can do target farming in these areas and but they do vary in cost so you gotta so when you go in you have to take like a mental note where you can look for a specific item slot you're looking for like a helmet and then you want to make a mental note on it and the cost so you want to make sure you can get there in time i think from what i from what i'm assuming that you open it one time per box but if you have extra standards you can go to a different box and open another one um, I don't think they like you can keep opening the same box. Like I just want helmets, and then just use all your cinders for the helmet. <laughs> like you open once from from what I've seen on the video, they open once. They don't like reclose or anything. All right, and hell type also can drop specific materials, crafting materials that only spawn in hell tides. I, I think they mentioned like I'm not sure if I got it correctly, but it sounds like bin groves or in groves. I don't know, but. Those are like specific drops you can get from Hell Tides. So they shown some sigil examples on the screen uh, for the Nightmare Dungeons, which change up the dungeon mechanics. And apparently you can also salvage these sigils uh, with a ratio of 4 to 1 in case you didn't want to do any specific sigils. Like their example was if the monsters do lightning damage and you have like no lightning resist, you don't want to do that one. You can salvage it and try to get a different sigil to run the Nightmare Dungeons. And they did show a Nightmare Dungeon run where it seems like a lightning bolt would periodically spawn and hit you. Um, there's like a, a cursor icon above your head that goes down and then we hit the bottom lightning will spawn and stun you for a bit. Um, and there's also a little other cursor icon that follows you around. And from what they said, it summons an AOE damage effect that poses in the area um to me it looks like a barrier when i when i first saw it until they mentioned it uh just based on like regular gameplay like the barrier has the white aura and stuff like that and then they just made it it just looks like a barrier because it's also a white area they should maybe change it to be like a dark dark area or 
uh, like a pinkish reddish area so it looks different and you don't know like oh yeah I knew these mechanics they're this looks like a barrier you go in and you get hit like yo come on <laughs> anyway this is me nitpicking and anyways they mentioned that the nightmare dungeon can also go up to level 150 monsters so I guess depending on the tier of the sigil you can actually push yourself even further because the max character level is 100 um, and there's also these glyph pedestals that you can find in the dungeon, Nightmare Dungeons, that you can use to upgrade your glyphs. Paragon boards, there are like four different rarities of nodes on the Paragon board. Normal, which is like the regular stat bonus, like willpower, dexterity, intelligence, strength, etc. And there's magic nodes, which are, give more bonuses. And it's not just bonus stats, there's like, uh, crackling damage or 1% more life and stuff. And then they talk about the rare nodes, which are powerful by default, but they can have extra bonus effects that if you meet the requirements, you unlock those. And they also mentioned that as you unlock boards, the cost of these requirements for these bonus effects get higher. So you want to, you want to be careful of how many boards you're unlocking. If you want to go for those rare nodes. And they also mentioned that there are 10 or more rare nodes per board, but I don't know, in data mine, um, it didn't seem like 10 or more rare nodes per board. <clears throat> All right, and it also have legendary nodes, which aren't the strongest thing on the board, but they can conduit with the rest of everything else on that board. So it's pretty much like the theme of that board. And then they talked about Glyph sockets, and apparently these seem to be like the most powerful things on the board. And they're fueled and powered by nearby nodes. Um, so those are pretty much the one you want to go for. But you want to be aware of like the nodes surrounding it in case like you have a glyph that gives dexterity nodes nearby, bonuses or whatever, and you're only get surrounded by like willpower, then obviously you want to... <laughs> Be aware where you want to put things, and of course, you can rotate these boards. <laughs> they started going over the beta feedback. They changed the dungeon layout. Um, they gave some examples of the dungeon layout changes to avoid the backtracking. So when you're actually going through a dungeon, you naturally run to your objectives, and you can continue along the main path. Obviously, when you're running through it, there's like a fog of war. You won't know, but most likely, you go to the main path, you run into the objective, so you won't actually go back to the same spot where you actually obtain the objective and then to avoid backtracking, obviously. And they talked about the kill monster object, kill all monster objective. And as you reach the threshold for how many monsters you kill, let's just say like, I don't know, like 85% or 90%, the monster will start chasing you. So that will in turn avoid backtracking and make things more intense. Cause then you suddenly just get swarmed by <laughs> zombies or something. Ooh, then they talk about that big question that everyone's talking about. The reset dungeon button is disabled. And they mentioned it was it made during the early development stage because there was no way to naturally reset dungeons. But now there is. So the button itself has some unwanted secondary effects because it was instant. And now dungeon reset over time. So if you have everyone in your party that's out there's just outside the dungeon and there's no portal in the dungeon. The dungeon will reset in about 60 seconds. Um, I think the way that they're talking, they it seems like you have to clear the dungeon and then everyone outside and they leave and then it'll reset every 60 seconds. Cause then they talk about if it's partially completed and then you leave, the reset is about 150 seconds. There are fixes that aren't on the blog of the beta feedback and that was one of them is the ultra widescreen casting distance like if you have ultra widescreen or the yeah the ultra widescreen or regular widescreen whatever you can see and click you can cast over there so i guess they fixed this so then there's the maximum cast distance and they also mentioned that people were going doing multiple world bosses in the same world boss window um, all they did said was that the first kill that you do for the world boss, you obviously get a lot way more drops. And then if you go back and kill the world boss again, you get way less drops. Um, it still seemed pretty good though. You still get rewards, but I, I don't know what else they mentioned regarding that. I must've missed it, but 
that's what they mentioned in this specifically this death live stream. All right, so the next section is pretty much the Q and A section. I'm just gonna go over all the answers that they they talked about. So battle passes, they're gonna balance it between different play styles, different player types, so that you can actually complete them in the reasonable time that anyone can just complete them, and it's gonna be engaging and fun <laughs> as you get getting rewards. Next is that they plan to have rotation about. 30 nightmare dungeons per season and so you don't have to concentrate on all 115 dungeons at once um, then they talked about all the seasonal and post launch news will be in the later date um, regarding the battle pass as well um, probably in I believe they're gonna talk about it in May and there'll be a lease um, for the non seasonal players the internal I guess characters they're going to be at least battle changes updates new legendaries and so things like that for the non-seasonal players um they mentioned they're going to be very cool stuff coming in season so do play it i guess <laughs> they add they're going to be adding some new interesting customization options within the seasons not in skill trees in particular so skill tree changes like new passes new nodes they're going to be an expansion and not in season and then regarding the renown, it will be reset within seasons, but they're going to be like way more activities that you can get renown that you need to complete the renown in the area. So the alter relatives give you permanent stat buffs when you interact with them. Um, those will actually carry out throughout the season within that game type. So if you're doing a hardcore, it'll be for hardcore internal and seasons. And then if you do soft, it's software it'll be for the soft core. Uh, within the seasons onward and internal, but if if you say you want both of them, then you gotta do it twice. But <laughs> that's that. So monster types also have a bonus chance of dropping certain items that are pretty much a chance to have something additional in terms of like, like for example, they said skeletons with crossbows, and then you can get the regular drops, and then in addition, there's the bonus chance you can get crossbows as well. Then they talked about wanting to separate um, combat and navigating even more so. So that's why we don't have a transparent map. We just have a mini map and then just a regular map. Um, they will continue to look through this post launch. And there are ele elevations in the game. You just might not notice it because it's like seamless. So different elevation within dungeons and stuff like that. And PvP is pretty much straight up chaos slaughter. The only order that they do is the bucketing. So you see more players within your level. And that's pretty much it. And in the tweet on Twitter, they did mention that if you die in hardcore and PvP, it's permadeath. So you're dead. <laughs> you die. Um, there's also no co-op for PC, local PC. Um, and there's no mouse and keyboard for console. And the crafting system will grow over time since it's a live service game, obviously. Ray tracing will be coming post launch. And you can pick up herbs while you're on your mount. And WASD movement will be looked at post launch. So that's pretty much what they went over. They did go over like some D2 and D3 stuff, but all, that's all the D4 stuff. Um, so, in summary, I'm excited for this um, based on my thoughts. And they didn't talk about. They didn't go, they didn't do a quick deep dive into the Whispers of the Dead. Or they didn't go talking about the new game system that they kind of teased on Twitter. I, I guess it's just pretty much the same game, end game system that we know about. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the summary. I will be playing the server during Server Slam as well as during launch. So feel free to check out my Twitch. I'll be streaming on there, uh, twitch.vz.vincente, and later days. <laughs>